Hello everyone and welcome back to Rapid Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. Today's video is brought to you by Cat File Explorer, the easiest way to see, manage and clean up AutoCAD files in Revit. Get your free copy today by following the link in this video description. Today let's see a few quick tips and tricks on how to work effectively with topography. In particular, we will see how we can change the way Revit shows our topography in views. After this lesson, you will know how to change your settings so you can achieve what I have here on screen. So if I go to this section, for example, and zoom in, you can see there I have applied a custom cut pattern to this topo surface. When I select this one there, that's the same topo on the left, but this time I have this custom pattern, which may be a particular requirement from my project. Also, the color has been changed. It's now not gray anymore or black, but a bit brownish. So if I zoom out like this, I have a solid base, nicely done, so I can present my drawing the way I want them to show. In addition, if I go to the floor plan now, I have modified it so I can see primary contours and secondary contours separately in different styles. Also, the contour labels have been placed, which is a live object. If I now even drag this one there, you can see all the numbers will update themselves nicely, just like this. And if I change my contour, if I move them up or down, these numbers will also reflect the new situation. So let's see right now how you can set these up yourself and also customize the settings to your project's needs. By the way, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe now because we do tutorials like this every single week. Okay, let's begin. The first trick I want to show you is how you can easily change this surface pattern or cut pattern of the topography in your Revit section views. Right now, this pattern is fine for most of the projects, but in some cases, you may want to use your custom earth pattern, or maybe the project you're working on has a particular requirement, and that means you want to change this for some reasons. This is how you can do that. When you're in section, go and select your topo surface there, and then go to the Manage tab, or actually the Massing and Size tab instead. In here, there's a very small button, very easy to miss. It's under the Model Side panel, and that's the little button here on the right, Site Settings. When you click this, this is all the settings you can change in terms of seeing your topo surface in the Revit views. One of the settings here is obviously the material of the topography, and that's what you see there. At the moment, the material is earth, but let's say you want to change it so you can modify the surface or the cut pattern. Just go to this little button here at the end. And as you can see, by going there, you will be taken to the material editor. This is where it's easy to either choose a different material or just modify this existing earth one. So let's say I want to change the cut pattern of this material. I can just go to the graphics tab now and under cut pattern, I can see that's the one being used. Let's click on this and how about we change it to something else. Let's say this one here. You can even change the color. How about we give it a more brownish tone just like this. And then do OK. OK again. As you can see, the color has changed and if you zoom in, that's a custom cut pattern that we have defined in the material editor. Very easy to do. Of course, you may want to scale it up a bit because now when I zoom out, that just gives me a solid pattern. So maybe or maybe not what you want. That's the first trick. The second trick you can use when working with Revit topography is this. Let's say I want to extend the region of this topography in section down. Right now it's stopping here. But if I want to have a deeper cut, maybe down to there, how can I do that? This is how. Firstly, let's see the actual full extent of the cut topography. I want to turn off crop view. And as you can see there, this is a good case to show because here I really want to extend this topography cut down so I can cover all of my piles from my foundations. Super easy to do as well. Just go to Massing and Sites again and return to this site settings. Here you can see the elevation of the base is extended down by 3 meters. Let's triple this number to 9 and see what it does. There we go. 
immediately I can have a deeper cut showing everything I need and cover what I don't want to see from the building, such as the pile of foundations that I saw before. Very nice. Let's move on to the next tip. Let's say I want to go to the site view now. And I can see now if I isolate this topography for a moment. We do have some contour lines, but they are a bit far apart from one another. What if I want to see them in a more dense pattern? I want to see more lines. This is how I can do that. Simply go and return to massing and side, return to site settings. And here, as you can see, we have the increment value here between multiple contour lines. For now, it's one meter. That means this line is one meter higher than this one. And this one is in turn one meter higher than the next one and so on. If I want to see more lines, I need to reduce this increment down to maybe 200 and apply this. And straight away, I have more contour lines. Moving on, the next trick is to show you how you can define not just identical contour lines like this, but also primary and secondary lines. Let's go back to site settings here. As you can see, the spacing we have defined is now between secondary contours. Let's say I want to have maybe a primary contour line every one meter. I can do so by inserting a new line here. Set this to either one meter or something else that I want. And then say this should be between primary contours. The range should be multiple values. And now let's see how it looks like. Well, nothing changed because I forgot one thing actually. Let's go back here. We also need to set the start and stop values for those contours. This one here, for example, the default one, it runs from zero to the elevation of, I think, 1000 meters there. So if for nothing else, we should copy the same value to the below box and apply this. And now, as you can see, we have the bolder primary contours every one meter and the smaller secondary contour lines between every 200 mil. So two, four, six, eight, 1000. So far so good. Let's show you now the next trick and that is to do with labeling contour lines. If I go to the massing and side tab again, there's a button here for placing label contours. This is a very hidden and underrated tool. Most people, when they design a site, and I want to show in plan view the height of each contour line. Sometimes without knowing the better tool, I just go to annotate, click on the text box, and maybe say that one should be three meters. They place a label there. Yeah, copy it down. And say that one should be 3200 and repeat the same step over and over again. This is a very slow and ineffective way to do this. So let me remove these two. The better way is actually using the data already there in the Revit model. And that's why we have here under massing and site, this label contours tool. When I click this, it allows me now to draw a line across my topography. So if I draw a line from this point to maybe this one here, straight away I can see my label contours have been generated as easy as that. If I now click on one of them, I can get the whole line. And because they appear to be just normal text boxes, even though used in a more clever way, when I have them selected, I can go to edit type now and change either the color of those contours, labels, the text size, if I want it to be smaller. But in bold, I can do that. They will change accordingly. So there's really no excuse to use text notes over this tool here, which is a lot more effective and quick to use. Even better, because these are live text notes, if I somehow change my contours, let's say I want to move it up. If I go to 3D, select this, and let's say I want to move it up by a meter, like that. As soon as I've done that, those contours will be updated for me. So you see here the new values are from 4600 to 1400. If I undo this change, if I undo the move, they are back to 3600 and 400. 
so these values are live and constantly updated to match the design of my topography. So far so good. The next trick is how to change the line pattern of those contours. For now they are solid lines, which is fine in most cases, but what if I want them to be dashed lines? That's easy to do too. All you have to do is go to manage and click on object styles. In here, make sure you're on the model objects tab and scroll down until you see topography. This one here. Expand this and you will have primary and secondary contour lines. This is the place where you can change their color or their line pattern. So let's try it out. Let's say I want to have primary contour lines in green for some reason and secondary ones in grey and also for secondary contours I want them to be dashed lines so let's try that here and click apply there you go now that's a much more readable site in my opinion everything is live and presented just the way I want them to be Moving on, the last trick I want to show you today is this. Let's say I want to see only the primary contour lines in this view. I can simply go to the visibility settings of the view here. Expand the same group from before, which is topography. And here, as you can see, I can either turn on or off primary or secondary contours or both of them. If I want to keep only secondary contours, I can untick primary apply this that's what I get or if I want to see just the primary ones I can untick secondary and apply this very nice what if I want to have the labels to update if I now click here right click create similar and draw a new line here as you can see they are updating but not according to the visibility we have set which is a shame because this is a good tool but also like if you use it then you need to have both primary and secondary contours on not a big problem in most projects because usually they should have been turned on both of them anyway but just something to keep in mind if you want to see just one set or the other all right if you enjoyed this lesson and want more like this coming every single week make sure to subscribe to this channel now for now enjoy mastering revit with rv boost and i'll see you in the next lesson